Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the NPTEL MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. Uh, so far what we have been looking at, we have been looking at uh, in the bone portfolio optimization in the framework uh, of finding out uh, matrices or measures uh, to ascertain what is the risk associated with the bond uh, from the point of view of its price movement resulting from change in the interest rate. And so far we have looked at what is the pricing of the bond yield to maturity and we have talked about duration, the properties of duration uh, and uh, what is going to be the duration of a portfolio and the concept of immunization or risk management in case of bond portfolio by matching of duration. So, we continue our discussion in today's class uh, by extending this to the notion of convexity and then we will uh, further discuss this concept of convexity in the context of uh, uh, portfolio and then we will see this in the in the framework of the percentage change of the bond prices and then we will look at a couple of example uh, to illustrate this notion of immunization which is the most basic notion in case of uh, risk management for bond portfolios. So, accordingly we now start this lecture. Uh, with the concept of uh, convexity. Uh, so, recall that uh, the mathematical notation of uh, convexity of a curve, it means or is interpreted as the rate of change of the slope of the curve. So, more formally uh, in the context of our discussion, I will start off with the definition as follows that in the case of bonds, the convexity is defined as C is equal to 1 over B R into D D R of D B D R and this is 1 over B R into D square B D R square. So, uh, the presence of this term B R in the expression and also this B R, this as opposed to only the rate of change of B R for convexity. So, for convexity normally I would just look at this term, but there is an additional term B R uh, in the denominator. So, this will be motivated uh, that is the reason why you have included this term B R in the subsequent discussion. Now, recall that d b d r we have already got the expression for this and what was this? This was summation of c t and the derivative with respect to r of 1, 1 plus r raised to minus t. So, this derivative becomes minus t into 1 plus r raised to minus t minus 1 t is equal to 1 to capital T. Uh, so, from here uh, we therefore get 
that c is equal to 1 over b into d square b dr square and this is going to be 1 over b into 1 plus r square into summation t into t plus 1 c of t into 1 plus r raised to minus t, t is equal to 1 to capital T. So, basically c is 1 over b into the second derivative and the second derivative here uh, is obtained by taking the derivative of this expression here to eventually get this expression for convexity. Uh, so, let us look at the convexity in case of a bond portfolio. So, we consider a bond portfolio comprising of capital N number of bonds and let the number of units. So, the setup is the same as that of a uh, uh, duration in case of a bond portfolio. So, accordingly let the number of units of the kth bond in the portfolio uh, of this n number of bonds be denoted by n k with the corresponding prices being denoted by b k of r and for k is equal to remember there are n number of bonds. So, k equal to 1, 2 all the way to capital N. Then the value of the portfolio is given by b p is equal to summation n k b k of r k is equal to 1 to capital N. All right. So, this is basically the value of this bond portfolio. So, now what you do is if you want to find out the convexity of this bond portfolio. So, accordingly what you need to do is then we differentiate B p twice remember this is the definition of convexity. So, we need the second derivative with respect to r and then divide this by B p of r we obtain the following. So, what do we obtain? We get that d square b b p over d r square is summation k is equal to 1 to capital N n k d square b k r of d r and this implies that if I want the definition of convexity, so I have to divide by b p. So, 1 over b p d square b p d r square this is going to be summation k is equal to 1 to n n k into b k of r divided by b p of r multiplied by 1 over b k of r into d square b k of r over d r square. Uh, so, basically we are just uh, dividing both sides by b p and then multiplying and divided both sides by b k of r. So, that I can recover the weights. So, this implies that, so this term here on the left hand side by definition is the convexity of the portfolio and this term here is the convexity of the kth asset and this as before this term is the weight. So, this is going to be w k c k the summation of this k is equal to 1 to capital N. So, uh, so thus the convexity of the bond portfolio is going to be equal to the weighted sum 
of the convexity of the bonds in the portfolio. So, here uh, C p is the convexity of the bond C k is the uh, so C p is the convexity of the bond portfolio uh, C k is the convexity of the kth bond W k uh, which was uh, n k b k of r over b p of r this is the weight of the kth bond in the portfolio and finally, you observe that uh, summation w k k is equal to 1 to capital N this is going to be summation n k b k of r k is equal to 1 to n over b p of r this is b p of r over b p of r and this is equal to 1. So, the weights defined in this way is again uh, satisfies the condition that uh, the sum of the weights is equal to Okay, what do you do next now is uh, we will now, now that you have defined duration and convexity, the next thing you will do is now that we will do a connection of duration and convexity. Okay, so, as before we consider the same setup and suppose that the bond prices is a function of r and is given by b of r. Now, let a small change dr in the interest rate result in a corresponding small change in the bond price. So, if a small interest rate change of dr results in the change in the bond price, then what we have? Then the percentage change uh, in the bond price is given by the following. So, your original bond price was B r and the new bond price is B when the interest rate is r plus d r. Remember the interest rate changes by d r. So, the change in the bond price as a result of the interest rate changing from r to r plus d r is given by B of r plus d r minus B r and according to the proportional change will be the ratio of B this uh, B r plus d r minus B r over the original B r and this is nothing but I will have B in the denominator and the numerator I will have the change delta B over B. So, this basically gives you the percentage change in the bond price. Okay, now, let us focus on this particular term. So, and remember that we had said that the d r is a small change. So, accordingly we can make a Taylor series approximation and accordingly we expand B of R plus D R as a Taylor series and after uh, retaining the two terms of the Taylor series, we obtain the following we obtain that delta B over B is approximately 1 over B R and then I do a Taylor series expansion of uh, B of R plus D R. So, this is going to be B of R 
plus d b d r into d r plus half d square b d r square into d r whole square minus b r plus the higher order terms which I am neglecting which is the reason why I have this approximation. So, this b r terms cancel out. Uh, so, we get 1 over b r into d v over d r uh, multiplied by d r plus half d square b d r square into d r whole square. Now, once I have this expression, so this can now be written as delta b over b and d b over d r is simply going to be minus d over 1 plus r. So, now what we have? We basically have uh, this term d b over d r divided by b r. So, this is nothing but minus d over 1 plus r multiplied by d r plus we have half d square b d r square divided by b r. So, this half term comes outside and the remaining term that is d square b d r square over b r this you would recall is the definition of convexity. So, this is c into my d r square and this term here uh, was used to define the modified duration. So, this can be written as minus d m into d r plus half c into d r square and this of course, in this in the sense of approximation. So, in summary what you can say is the following that uh, first of all delta b over b is going to be approximately minus d over 1 plus r dr and is equal to minus d m into dr. When you are using only duration and secondly from this expression we get delta b over b which is approximately minus d m into d r plus half c of d r square for both duration and convexity. So, that means that you can get an estimate of the percentage change in the bond price and this is some sort of like uh, this term here this form is some sort of a first order approximation and this expression here is some sort of a second order approximation. So, this percentage change in the bond price can in the simplest case be given in terms of the duration or the modified duration and uh, that means the percentage is change is dependent only on duration and on top of this you can actually have a better approximation by the inclusion of the convexity term wherein you accommodate the, that the percentage change of the bond price is dependent on both duration as well as convexity. So, this the first term where you only invest duration gives an estimate and the one which in the second expression which involves the both duration and convexity it uh, gives us a better estimate as compared to the first case. So, in some sort of this addition of the convexity term helps us uh, obtain a correction or a better estimate as compared to the one that is given by the, uh, just the duration only and this is estimation for what? This is the estimation for the percentage change in the bond price as a result of the interest rate uh, moving by some small amount of dr. Okay, uh, so, now recall that d is equal to minus of 1 plus r over b into d v d r which gives the following. So, I can take the derivative of this. So, d d over d r this is going to be minus of b minus 1 plus r b prime over b square into b prime minus 1 plus r over b into b double prime. So, I am just using the product rule of uh, differentiation. Also, you recall another form of this d d over d r and that was given by d d over d r is equal to minus of 1 plus r inverse into v d. So, therefore, what do we have? So, we can equate both this expression for d d over d r. Uh, let me call this 1 and 2. 
So, therefore, equating 1 and 2, uh, we obtain the following. So, we get that B of R minus 1 plus R B prime of R over B square R into B prime of R plus. So, this is this will become plus. So, there is a negative sign, negative sign here and negative sign here all of which will cancel out. So, I will have 1 plus R over B of R into B double prime of R is equal to 1 plus R inverse into V d. So, this implies that 1 over B of R into 1 plus D into B prime of R plus 1 plus R over B R into B double prime of R is equal to 1 plus R inverse into V D. So, essentially this term here is nothing but writing this term in a different form. So, the first term is going to be say B prime into B r over B square r. So, this is B prime r over B r. So, you see that this is B prime over B r and the other term will contain d and the remaining two terms have been uh, reproduced as it is. All right. So, now what you can do now? So, now observe very carefully. So, I have this 1 plus d term and then I have B prime of r over B r which is nothing but minus d over 1 plus r. And here I have B double prime of R over B R. So, this is going to be 1 over uh, 1 plus R and this term here is going to be C and this is going to be equal to V D over 1 plus R. Now, this implies that minus D into D plus 1 and multiplying both sides by 1 plus R. So, I get plus 1 plus R whole square C this is equal to V D and this implies that C is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus R whole square into. So, I bring this term to the right hand side. So, I get V D plus D into D plus 1 and I divide both sides by 1 plus R whole square. So, now you see that we have a relation which connects the convexity with the duration. All right. So, now what we have done is uh, we have talked in detail about what is the definition of duration and as well as convexity. We also looked at what is going to be the duration and convexity of a portfolio of bonds and in both cases this was seen that uh, the respective uh, quantities namely the duration and convexity of a portfolio is going to be the weighted sum of the duration and respectively the convexity of the each of the bonds that are a part of this particular portfolio. And what we did is that we then observed that uh, this duration uh, and convexity they are uh, basically some sort of a matrix in, in order to evaluate what is going to be the percentage change uh, in the price of the bond whenever there is a slight change in the interest rate. And we saw that this when the approximation to this percentage change was done uh, using duration this was some sort of a linear relation or linear function of dr and when it was extended and uh, to obtain a better estimate involving uh, uh, the convexity then it became a quadratic function of dr and these two were essentially two ways of uh, approximating the percentage change in the price of the bond. So, what we are going to do next is we are going to look at a couple of examples uh, on how one can make use of this notion of duration uh, in case of immunization. And we will so show a first a generalized example and then we will look at a specific example uh, to illustrate this notion of bond portfolio optimization making use of the concept of immunization which, which essentially relies on uh, the matching of durations. So, accordingly we first start with uh, this uh, generic example and uh, this example is on the problem of future assets and liabilities and in particular we will do, dwell upon what is known as the, the Reddington's condition. Okay, so, accordingly let us have the prelude to this. So, let the future 
cash outflows of an entity at time uh, t is equal to 1, 2 all the way to capital T be denoted by capital L subscript T, L is for liability. Uh, also, let the future cash inflows as opposed to outflows of the entity at time T is equal to 1, 2 all the way to capital T be denoted by say A T and A is for asset. All right. Now, uh, suppose that, so as has been the case so far, we also assume in this case that the interest rate term structure is flat. So, that means uh, the interest rate for all maturities is identical. Then the present value of future liabilities and assets are given by the following. So, if we have the payments liabilities of L t at time t, so the present value of the tth liability is L t into 1 plus r raised to minus t and then the present value of all this liability is going to be summation of this from t equal to 1 to capital T which are denoted by capital L and likewise the assets at time little t the present value of which would be 1 plus r raised to minus t into a t and I sum this up from t is equal to 1 to capital T and I will denote this by a. And the assumption is that the initial net value of future cash flows so, I will use n uh, is, is equal to a minus l. So, this is the net value and this is 0 at the initial time. So, n equal to a minus l is the generic uh, uh, net value of Kitchener clash flows and at the initial time point we take this to be equal to 0. So, initially we have a is equal to l and the question that we want to answer is that how to choose the structure of assets so that this net value does not change as a result of change in interest rate. So, that means that this is unaffected by interest rate and the broader answer to this is that we want, so this is equivalent to saying that we want that this net value n given by a minus l to be insensitive to r. So, when I say that we want this to be insensitive to r, so hence this means that we want that d n with respect to d r is going to be equal to 0. All right. So, therefore, what is going to be my d n d r? d n of d r is nothing but the derivative with respect to r of a minus l and what is a minus l? This is going to be summation a t minus l t into 1 plus r raised to minus t, t is equal to 1 to capital T. And this is nothing but if you take the derivative 1 over 1 plus r summation t is equal to 1 to capital T t into l t minus a t uh, because this uh, the derivative of this will involve minus t. So, I change this uh, sign and make this l t minus a t into 1 plus r raised to minus t. 
And what is this? This is going to be if you observe carefully each of the term, you keep 1 over 1 plus r uh, outside and this summation t l t to 1 plus r is to minus t, this is nothing but d l of l minus d a of a where as you would have guessed d l and d a are the duration of l and a. So, d l what is this going to be? This is going to be summation t is equal to 1 to capital T by definition is t into l of t into 1 plus r is to minus t over l. So, here this term t l t into 1 plus r is to minus t this is going to be this term here and that is d l of l which is how I get this term here and in identical manner the duration of the assets is going to be summation t a t into 1 plus r raised to minus t over a and t is equal to 1 to capital T. So, again this term is the one that we have here and accordingly this term is going to be d a into a that we obtain here. Now, remember that uh, this what we have, so this is simply going to be a over 1 plus r into d l minus d a. Since my a is equal to l initially and this is has to be equal to 0, remember that we need d and d r to be equal to 0 and this is the therefore, we need that d l is equal to d a, so that we are going to have a matching of our assets and liabilities. Okay, so, next we look at uh, another example, uh, the last example and this is on hedging using immunization. So, here uh, let us have the problem set up. So, let us assume that the term structure is horizontal and let the annual interest rate be 5 percent. So, that means, there is a 5 percent interest rate for all maturities because I have assumed that term structure is horizontal. Now, suppose that we have a liability of 100 with maturity of 2 years. Now, in the market, suppose there are 2 bonds namely the first one is a pure discount bond of maturity 1 year with the nominal of 100 and secondly there is a pure discount bond of maturity 4 years with the nominal of 100. So, let us observe this graphically. So, uh, what you have is that on one side you have the liability uh, that means, from now to 2 years, at 2 years you have to pay an amount of 100 and accordingly uh, and then what you will have is that uh, in the market there are only 2 bonds uh, the first bond uh, is of maturity 1 year with a nominal of 100 and these are pure discount bond and the second one uh, it has a it has a maturity of 4 years with a pure discount bond. Now, what am I supposed to do here? I mean why am I calling it the hedging? The reason why I am calling it the hedging is that I have a liability of an amount of 100 
and as I will uh, shortly write that I start off with an amount of 90.70. Now, if it turns out that the market had a 2 year bond available at the interest rate of 5 percent, then all I would do is simply invest the money that I have now that is an amount of 90.70 uh, for a period of 2 years and at the end of 2 years I will exactly get an amount of 100 in order to meet my liability. However, in the market unfortunately there is no 2 year bond and the only thing that I have in the market are 1 year bond and there is a 4 year bond, both are pure discount and both of them have a nominal of 100. So, now the problem is that if I invest a part of my money in the first bond for 1 year, then at the end of 1 year I have to reinvest that money and then I do not know what is going to be the prevailing interest at that point of time. And likewise, I have to invest a certain amount of money in the 4 year bond which I have to liquidate or break at the end of 2 years and again I do not know how much money I will receive because the amount of money that I receive at the end of 2 years by breaking the bond is going to be dependent on what is going to be the prevailing interest rate at that point of time. So, the question that now faces me is that since I do not have uh, I am sitting with an amount of 90.70 and since I do not have the choice of buying a 2 year bond and then I have to decide that ok, I will have to go for a, a portfolio of bonds comprising of the first bond uh, with a 1 year maturity and the second bond with a 4 year maturity. So, let me call this the first one to be bond 1 and the second one to be bond 2 and the question is that how much of the initial amount of money that I have namely 90.70. Uh, as that, that amount of money, what proportion should I invest in the first bond with one year maturity and what proportion or the weight that I should assign in case of the second bond with the four year maturity. Uh, so, let me call this bond 1 uh, as I have just now said and this is going to be my bond 2. Okay, so, now as I, as I mentioned while discussing this uh, just now, we start with an amount of 90.70. So, if we have 90.70, if we had a 2 year bond, this into 1.0, 1 plus 0 0.05 square, this would have gone to 100. But unfortunately, this kind of bond is not available and so I have to create a portfolio of bond 1, uh, that is this bond and bond 2 that is this 4 year bond. Alright, uh, so now uh, in order to me meet the obligation of 100 in 2 years time, we have to invest in a portfolio of bonds by immunization or what is known as matching duration. So, you have already seen that you know the duration matching has to be done. So, this means that uh, in order to put this in more specific term, what we say that that is one liability with maturity of 2 years must be matched with by purchasing of bonds of maturity of 1 year and 4 years. Now, the liability after 2 years has duration of 2. Now, why am I saying the liability after 2 years has a duration of 2? So, liability of, of this 100 that you have to pay after 2 years, this is like you having issued a bond of uh, with the nominal value of 100 and the bond is a pure discount bond. So, you recall that one of the properties of uh, a pure discount bond in terms of duration is that uh, the in case of a pure discount bond, its duration is going to be exactly the same as the maturity of the bond 
and that is the reason why that the liability of this uh, uh, this two year liability uh, of uh, an amount of 100 to be paid at maturity that liability is equivalent to a bond having a duration of 2. So, accordingly whenever, whenever I try to protect myself against the adverse movement of the interest rate. So, in this case the bond portfolio that I am going to create it has to be created in such a way that the duration of the uh, bond portfolio has to exactly match this duration of 2 years. That means, I must choose my investment proportion or weights for bond 1 and bond 2. So, that the resulting uh, duration of the uh, bond portfolio is going to be the same as so, accordingly, uh, so what is the goal? So, just to put it in more uh, clear term that the portfolio of bonds must then also have duration 2. So, let the weights of the one year and 4 years pure discount bonds uh, that is the one which are identified as bond 1 and bond 2. This be alpha and 1 minus alpha respectively. The corresponding duration, now remember that both this 1 and 4 year bond, this are a pure discount bond. So, the corresponding duration are D 1 is equal to 1 and D 2 is equal to 4. So, then uh, we do this matching duration and what is this going to be? It is going to be the weight uh, of the first bond into duration D 1 plus weight of the second bond into duration D 2 which is equal to the duration of the portfolio uh, which is equal to 2. So, this implies that alpha into 1 plus 1 minus alpha into 4 is equal to 2 which implies that alpha is going to be equal to 2 over 3. So, that means you have to is, uh, assign two third weight to the first bond and one third weight to the second bond. So, therefore, what do you do? We invest, how much was the investment amount? My investment amount was 90.70 and I invest two third of this amount and this is going to be 60.47 and this is my investment in bond 1 and uh, similarly you will have the remaining one third uh, you of the total amount of 90.70. So, this is 30.23 this is invested in bond 2. All right. So, based on the weight 60.47 is invested in bond 1 and 30.23 is invested in bond 2. Now, what is the price of the bond? So, price of bond 1, how do we get the price of bond 1? It is basically the price of the bond 1 is equal to, it pays a nominal of 100 and since it is a pure discount bond paying interest rate at 5 percent. So, I have to divide this by 1 plus 0. So, this is uh, 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to 1 because it is a 1 year bond and this is 95.24. So, therefore, N 1 is going to be equal to 60.47 that means the number of bonds that you purchase is the amount invested in the bond which is 60.47 divided by the price of the bond which is 95.24 and this turns out to be 0 0.63 and this is the units of bond 1. Now, also what is going to be the price of bond 2? Now, remember the bond 2 also has a nominal of 100 and this was a 4 year bond at an interest rate of 0 0.05 or that is 5 percent. So, this is going to be 100 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to 4 since it is a 4 year bond and this turns out to be 82.27. So, therefore, N 2, what is N 2? The number of uh, units of the second bond, this is going to be the amount of 30.23 invested in the second bond divided by the price of the second bond which is 82.27 and this is going to be 0 
units of bond 2. And please do not assume that you know the number of units must add up to 1 uh, even though in this case coincidentally uh, n1 plus n2 adds up to e p equal to 1, but it is obviously not necessarily the case. All right. So, what is now the purpose of my matching duration? The purpose of my matching duration is to protect myself against the interest rate movements. So, accordingly let us consider two scenarios of an immediate change in the interest rate movement. So, the first scenario is going to be the following. So, immediately after you have made these purchases, say the rates go up from 5 percent to 6 percent, uh, but of course, uh, I still assume that the term structure is horizontal. Uh, so, this means that earlier we had a 5 percent interest rate for all maturities, now it is 6 percent for all maturities. Then what is going to be the present value of assets and liabilities are given by. So, what is this going to be? So, what is going to be your assets? So, actually I let me do the liabilities first. So, the present value of liabilities and assets are. So, what was your liability? Your liability was 100 and its present value uh, since it is an immediate change in the interest rate. So, its present value is going to be 100 divided by uh, 1 plus 0 0.06 because the interest rate now is 0 0.06 square and this is equal to 89. And in the second case, what is going to be the present value of bond 1? It is going to be 100 divided by 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to 1 and 100 divided by 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to 4 multiplied by the respective units which are 0 0.63 and 0 0.37 and we add this up and this turns out to be 88.74 and these two numbers this match approximately. So, they should have similar. So, earlier these values are 90.74, but now they are almost matching with a slight error resulting from you know. Uh, the truncations resulting from the uh, approximation used in determining the uh, duration. Now, uh, so th this matches approximately, then you would consider what is the scenario 2. Uh, so, now here we saw that there was an increase in interest rate. So, let us consider a scenario 2 where there is a decrease in the interest rate. Uh, so, the assumption is that uh, immediately after the rates go down from 5 percent to 4 percent, uh, but as before the term structure is still horizontal. So, now instead of 5 percent being the interest rate for all maturities, it is going to be now 4 percent. So, in this case also the present value of liabilities and assets are the following. So, in this case your liability again you recall was 100 and then its present value is going to be 1 divided by now the interest rate is 0 0.04 uh, uh, which is equivalent to 4 percent. So, the liability is going to be present value of the liabilities 100 divided by 1 plus 0 0.04 square and this is going to be 92.46 and 100 divided by 1.04 is going to the present value uh, pertaining to the first bond and 100 divided by 1.04 uh, raised to 4 this is going to be the present value of the second bond and then I multiply this by the respective number of units which are 0 0.63 and 0 0.37 and I add them up and this adds up to 92.20 and again you see that there. So, earlier again this uh, uh, both these numbers 
this number here and this number here uh, they were 90.70 but now again they are more or less matching approximately. So, the, this brings us to the end of this lecture and uh, this uh, topic on bond portfolio optimization. So, ju just to do a recap of whatever we have done today, we continued our discussion on uh, uh, by extending the uh, notion of duration and you extended it to a second order matrix for determining uh, or which is linked to the uh, risk associated with the bond, uh, in particular the liquidity risk and we define what is known as the convexity. And then we looked at what is uh, the uh, what is going to be the uh, convexity in case of a portfolio, and we looked at approximations to the percentage change in the uh, bond price as a result of interest rate movement in terms of uh, both duration and convexity. And then we looked at two examples uh, illustrating the notion of immunization or matching of durations. Uh, so, this as I said concludes this module on board for bond portfolio optimization and from the next week we will start off on the new topic that is on risk management using the notion of value at risk and conditional value at risk. Thank you for watching.